Have you ever been really sad and depressed and somebody just said, get over it? Oh, who hasn't? I hate that. On today's episode, we're going to tell you how you actually can get over it. But first, this is the FitMess, where together we learn to develop habits that help us live beyond our mental health struggles to create happier, healthier lives. He's Zach. He lives in the future with his anxiety. He's Jeremy, and he lives in the past with his depression. And we get together once a week in the present to share the obstacles we face and how we overcome them. Life happens. Shit goes wrong. Shit happens that you react badly to. And that stuff is really hard to do. But I try and do really hard things on purpose. Like at work, I'll take on big hairy projects or I'll do really hard things at the gym. Yeah. And literally putting myself out there to do these hard things when I choose to. And then when the really hard things that I don't choose comes along, while I don't handle it gracefully all the time, mm -hmm. and I could probably do a better job, like yeah. you're just more prepared for when life throws you that one-two punch, right? It's the whole reason to do it. I mean, why would we subject ourselves to these stupid hard things that we put ourselves through if not to prepare for the ones that were not expected? Exactly. And until I like, you know, I just recently went through something that was really hard for me. I'm now looking back at like the wisdom and the, 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 the guidance of that, those previous experiences that I put myself through, like how they, they guided me through that situation. Again, you don't always handle it well. And I didn't handle this one super well. And I don't really want to get into the details of this sure. particular one. However, you know, my initial reaction to a situation that I just went through was pretty poor and let it get to me. And it really drove me into a state of depression and to the point where I was making mistakes mm -hmm. and making the wrong choice on things that just, that were unrelated. Yeah. So, but it really took a moment of, you know, looking back at all those hard things that I've done to realize, okay, this thing that's going to be really hard for me, I can do it because I've done this and I've done that. And the evidence shows that I can totally do it. I've done it before. Yeah. So why am I letting this get to me? And it like just accepting the fact that this situation is what it is and I can do the hard things in life, mm -hmm. like literally flipped it on its, uh, on, on its, it that amazing. perspective shift is super hard for people to, to get to. Um, I'm curious though, you talked about getting into a bit of depression over this thing you went through. Did you ever find yourself, uh, and I'm asking just for some companionship in this, did you ever find yourself in that depression almost wanting to be there? Like there's a, there's a righteousness in how like shitty everything is in this situation and like the world's against you, whatever this thing is, like it sucks. And like you, it kind of makes you feel like, yeah, this, this sucks for me. I, I deserve to be angry about this. So I'm going to stay here where it's, where I'm righteous and, and just pleased as punch to be pissed off about how awful this is. Yes. However, I'm going to, I'm going to flip it a little bit. So when I was younger, that was the only way I got attention from my dad was to be depressed and angry yeah. and sad. And then I got the attention and I'd hear things from him like, you know, I love you kiddo, which any other time I would never hear things like that. So I still, you know, I, it's not conscious, but like, I still feel that when I'm in that depressed state, when I'm in those moments, I still feel like it's justified because I'm going to get that, yeah. that attention from people that I want, that I'm longing for. I mean, come on, I'm 45 years old and like, I don't get, I'm not 10 anymore. I don't get that fucking attention anymore, but right. I still think that it's okay to be depressed and be in that state. And like, there's a level of comfort there because I know there's a, and I love you kiddo coming soon. Yeah. From it. Like it's a weird blanket to be in, like where you're in yeah. pain hurts, but at the same time you're like, this is okay because this is, people are going to recognize me. And Pete, for me, it's, it's all about other people recognizing how much pain I'm in mm -hmm. and then coming up and saying, I love you kiddo. Are you conscious of that in the moment though? Because I, I feel the same way. Like I, I recognize a pattern of when I feel like this, people care, they pay attention, they come around, they whatever. And it, it starts to reinforce the behavior of if, if I feel this way, I'll, I'll get what I need. 
where the healthy thing would be to go to those you need that attention from and say, hey, I need this attention from you right now, which is incredibly harder than than just getting depressed and being stuck there and feeling miserable because yep. of that pattern you've learned. Hoping you can read your mind and come say, I love you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But it's such a hard pattern to unlearn when it is. I mean, I'm, I'm sure for me, I, I can't pinpoint that same you know, childhood experience. I don't remember, you know, people coming to my rescue when I was there, but I recognize now. And, and so I guess the, the other thing I want to ask about this is, are you aware of it in the moment? So like, when, or do you realize after the fact, oh, I got what I needed and now I can come out of this cloud? Well, I never truly get what I need. I get out of the cloud a different way. I would say nine times out of 10, I don't realize yeah. that that's what I'm looking for. I just, it just feels like a justification. Like I'm mm -hmm. justified to feel this way. I just latch onto the feeling mm -hmm. of being justified and then I get more depressed. I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Um, and then I'll either live in that and it takes the realization of like, oh, no, 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 it's not fine. Like no one's going to come say, I love you. Like long after the fact or the depression lifts on its own and I move on. And yeah. then I realized, right, that's you're doing X because that happened and this happened. And yeah, right. You need to, you need to untrain that. There's almost like a, like a loneliness, I think that, that you experience that triggers that feeling. And so then it's sort of that, oh, well, if you're going to feel lonely, let's, let's get lonely. Let's just go yeah. be alone. Like, let's just isolate from the world and, and hide in the dark room where, where you clearly deserve to be because you're not getting, you know, the love and attention that you need. Uh, and so it just sort of feeds on itself in, in that way. Yeah, I can, I will say in, in one of the recent bouts that I had, I, you know, I did want to be alone and I was like, I, and I did everything I could to be alone and I finally got it. And I think like 10 minutes into being alone, I was like, well, fuck, this isn't <laughs> actually what I want. <laughs> right. It will never cease to amaze me. Like how well-versed you and I are in mental health, depression, anxiety. And I mean, if there was a fast track through to like get a, a degree in psychology, the two of us could probably do it in like six months. Like, you know, like we have an insane amount of knowledge. And even with that knowledge, right, the amygdala fucking strikes <laughs> and all logic goes out the door and uh -huh. you just, and then you like come back up for air after these moments of, where like you're literally fucking mentally compromised or emotionally compromised and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. I know better than that. Yeah. So it is horrifying to like know that much about psychology and how the human brain works and still succumb to it. But then on the flip side of it, it's also like refreshing to be like, I know that much about it and I still succumb to it. I'm fucking human. Yep. Yep. Right. Like, so it, it's, it's bittersweet to some extent. Well, it's always surprising to me, whatever therapist I have, when I find out they also have a therapist, I'm just like, what? But, but it's for that same reason. Like you need that objective third person, right? You need that, that mirror to be held up by someone who is not your friend or not your family that brings all of the story and all the baggage that you have together into that experience. I mean, even when you were going through what you went through, I probably gave you terrible advice because of... <laughs> what has, what the outcome of your experience has been, but it was because of my clouded, my, my biased perspective of you, where if I'm, if I'm not a friend, if I don't have years of knowledge of who you've been and what you've been through, it's a little bit easier to look at this isolated thing and go, how do we pick this apart and make this resolve to a better conclusion? I wouldn't say you gave me bad advice. I think I followed advice that I shouldn't have. <laughs> well, it's because it was bad advice, but you know, yeah, again, right. human, we're all human. It is all human. But again, like I'm, 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 I've said this a thousand times before, but I'm like really trying to take this moment and like, you know, I've, I even put something on my phone home screen to kind of remind me of this one. Mm -hmm. It is, we are human and we all have bouts of this and it sucks. It really fucking sucks. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I want to remember how that felt. I want to remember the things I wasn't doing that led me to that place. The, you know, the, the meditation, the, all the bits yeah. and pieces that I should have been doing. And, and to be fair, like, again, like it was a perfect storm for me where it was like, 
a little bit of work, a little bit of personal stuff, a little bit of like everything all yeah. hit me in one shot and yeah. probably would have, you know, like horse tranquilizer. Like it, it got me, but I got to remember, like, those are the moments that we do all these things for to make yep. sure that when we do have those downfalls, they're shorter, you handle them better and they don't happen as often. Yeah. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds at Mint Mobile. We like to do the opposite of what big wireless does. They charge you a lot. We charge you a little. So naturally when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Let's jump back to the perspective shift. Obviously, we don't want to reveal too much. This, this is one of those things that's a little too personal for a, for a public podcast, but I'm curious about that perspective shift. You and I had a, a number of conversations. I know you had other resources you reached out to. What did it take for you to go from this is a shitty situation to switch flipped, I'm on board, let's move forward? It all comes down to choice. And as much as I hate to say this, like happiness is a choice. Like, and and I know how horrible that sounds for anyone who is sad. Like the only way to really make a huge difference is to decide that you're not going to be like that anymore. And that's a choice. And you have to decide to be happy. And if there's things that happen in your life that, again, in this scenario, I've got something coming that's going to be hard for me. It's going to be really hard for me to deal with. But I've dealt with situations like this in the past. And I've to, to the point of like, we do hard things, you know, so that we can have evidence so that we have a, have a supporting body that says you can do hard things. And it was really kind of that, that I need, I needed to, to look at the, the evidence that I was able to do these things in order to really get okay and be like, okay, I can do this. And because I can do this, I'm going to choose to be happy about it. And there's no other option. And the second that I chose to be happy about it, the whole perspective shifted. And I know choosing to be happy about something is not some, it's not something you just, you know, snap your fingers and you do, mm -hmm. you have to be mentally there all the time. Whenever those thoughts of, I don't want this come up. You need to get in front of them and be like, yeah, you don't, but you're going to have to. So suck it up, buttercup. And I know, again, like we talk all the time about it's not about sucking it up and just like doing the thing. Yeah. But sometimes it is. I wanted to challenge a little bit the idea that, that it is a choice because many times it is. Many times it's not. I mean, I think that, you know, look at the, the last guest we had on the show. I don't think that that is somebody who had much of a choice about the way that he dealt with depression when, when he was basically fighting the idea of, I want to be dead every minute of his life. That's a little bit harder than I need to be happy about life. Right. I mean, there, there are lines. So anybody who's hearing or you yeah. say there, you know, that, that happiness is a choice. Take that with a grain of salt, given your situation, because there are, there is okay. clinical and there's I'm depressed because I'm overwhelmed by life and the circumstances that I'm in. Right. And when I say choice, it's, it's usually a situational choice. Yes overall depression and unhappiness yes you have to make a choice to be better but that doesn't resolve that kind of depression and unhappiness right if right. you have a situation that's making you unhappy that's when you have a choice to go you know what i can flip this yeah. i can make better choice here so i yeah so if i came off as as the, like i said i i said it was going to be unpopular but there's a very big difference right. between I hate myself and want to die and choosing different, that's not possible. And I'm generally okay. And I have a scenario that fucking sucks. You can choose different for that scenario. So yeah, I don't want to take, take away from anyone who's struggling right. in, in any of those scenarios. You definitely, you know, choice comes into play in all of it. It can fix the little ones. It's not going to fix the big yeah. ones. It's going to be think a factor. I think the thing that, that maybe does apply somewhat universally though, is the, the choice to fight it, right? Like there's, yeah. it's so easy to succumb to it and just be, give up, go lay down in, in, you know, in bed for days and, and not, you know, not deal. You know, for me, there's been levels of, you know, extreme to just situational that often the situational is the trigger that leads to the deeper issue because I, I, because I let it, 
And, yeah. and I can only say that because of the situation I'm in now where, you know, I'm coming up on, I mean, I'm still a few months shy of basically a year without a significant depressive episode because I made the choice to pursue therapies, pursue physical movement, pursue things that, that battle it, that keep it, that keep it away. So that now, you know, we started talking about doing hard things. I do these hard things almost every day because I know eventually that thought is going to come, that overwhelm is going to come and it's going to be too much. And I need to be able to say, no, I'm not giving up. I'm not just going to lay down and take this. I'm stronger than this. I have the evidence to prove it. And yep. now I do. And, and in ways that I've never experienced in my life, I'm able to recognize the things that would typically trigger me into a depressive episode and stop them in their tracks before I'm, you know, taken out of my family's life for a few days or whatever it takes to get through that particular episode. For which I am super proud of you and happy, you know, that you've, you've achieved all this. I also want to acknowledge that, you know, we've been doing this show for what, six years now. Mm -hmm. And this has been like such a, an iterative process for you. Yeah. Just to, you know, like, make sure people understand that this was not an overnight change for you. This was right. literally thousands of little steps along yeah. the way. Six, six years of doing this show followed, I don't know, a handful of years of just therapy, doing some basic groundwork to try to build the foundation. I mean, we're looking at, I'm, I'm sure by now, a well over a decade of effort yeah. that it took now at 47 years old to be able to say, I know how to manage my depression. Yeah. So again, I, I, I don't want anyone listening to this to say, he did it. I, why can't I do it in two days? Just decide. This, this has been a, a long, I mean, same for me. Like when yeah. I was 30, it was like, hate myself and want to die. Now yeah. I'm pretty content, but it took 10 years to get there. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's what we, you know, we have a whole catalog of episodes on little things that you can do and try over the next yeah. few years. But you know, if you, if you are struggling with it and you, you are depressed and unhappy and all that stuff, like keep plugging away, man, there is hope. It takes a while. And I know it's, I know it feels hopeless, but you can get there. Yeah. You just have to, unfortunately make the choice to be better every day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, I'm, I'm glad you got through your storm. Uh, hopefully things are on a better track for you. And uh, I wish you luck in continuing to keep the perspective you have now and to have that spill over into a, a, a enjoyable and, and pleasurable experience moving forward to, to help really highlight how dark it was for you and to be able to, to enjoy how far you've come. You could have just said, keep, keep on keeping on. Keep on keep <laughs> Get her done, bro. <laughs> Did you know using your browser in incognito mode doesn't actually protect your privacy? Take back your privacy with IPVanish VPN. Just one tap and all your data, passwords, communications, browsing history, and more will be instantly protected. IPVanish makes you virtually invisible online. Use IPVanish on all your devices, anytime you go online at home and especially on public Wi-Fi. Get IPVanish now for 70% off a yearly plan with this exclusive offer at IPVanish.com slash audio. All right, folks, that's all for this week. We hope this conversation about doing hard things has been beneficial for you. And if it has, please do a simple thing and share it with someone who should hear it. You can find the links to do so at thefitmess.com. And that's where we'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks so much for listening. We know this podcast is amazing and it doesn't seem to lack anything, but we need a legal disclaimer. Prior to implementing anything discussed in this podcast, it is your responsibility to conduct your own research and consult your physician. You should assume that Jeremy and Zach don't know what they're talking about, and they're not liable for any physical or emotional issues that occur directly or indirectly from listening to this podcast. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail.